Hello, hello. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm an oboe player and I repair woodwind instruments. And today I want to teach you how to not destroy your oboe. So this will be great for beginning students as well as probably some advanced players and even some teachers uh, to go over with your students on assembling the oboe. Let's get started. The first thing I do when I'm gonna play the oboe is I get a small glass of water. This is just a shot glass. I filled about halfway and I'm gonna take my reed and gently place the cane portion of the reed into the water so it can soak. Now, if you are used to playing clarinet or saxophone, you're probably used to soaking the reed just in your mouth. For oboe, water works a lot better. It helps the reed last a little bit longer, and also it helps water soak inside the reed in between the blades. So definitely, before you put your oboe together, reed goes for a swim. I'm gonna set that aside and open up my oboe case. So to orient ourselves a little bit, we have the bell of the oboe. We have the upper joint here with a crown at the top. And we have the lower joint here with the sticking out keys at the top of it there. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my bell into my right hand and my lower joint into my left hand. And if you have an oboe that is new or that has thick cork, you might find it hard to assemble and you might wanna put a little bit of cork grease onto the cork. Uh, I would use the smallest amount that you can get away with and be careful that cork grease isn't just accumulating on here over time and getting um, thick and sticky and gross. Um, a lot of times it looks like a, a little tube of chapstick. You just put a, one little small coat on there. This oboe uh, is nice and broken in and so you won't see me use cork grease today. When you're putting your oboe together, the main thing that I would like you to avoid is this cluster of these three keys right here on the lower joint. It's super, super, super common. <laughs> I see these keys bent and disfigured all the time because what people do when they put their oboe together is they place their palm on top of those three keys and smoosh them as you're wrangling the sections of your oboe. So definitely avoid those keys. When you put your bell onto your oboe, place your left hand above that cluster of those three keys. So the palm of my hand, here's my thumb rest, and the back of the oboe is in the palm of my hand, and my fingers, you can go ahead and squish these keys down all you want, it won't hurt the oboe. For the bell in your right hand, if you have a key on your bell, go ahead and press that down. Some oboes have a key on the bell and some don't. Either way, what you're gonna do is assemble the two parts using a twisting action. And then as you twist it, if you have a key on your bell, you wanna line up the key with the key that uh, corresponds on the lower joint. Next, you're gonna switch this into your right hand and take your upper joint with your left hand. Now, your right hand is gonna be placed to where you are going to press these low keys here. And the reason for that is a lot of times I see the keys of the oboe have become bent. If you take these keys here and press them down, 
as you assemble your oboe, what you're gonna do is have a little traffic jam or a crashing of these two keys. And then they become bent and mangled and all messed up. Plus, if you look at this cluster of three keys here that I warned you about earlier, now I'm on top of those two and I don't wanna be doing that. So undo, undo, undo. Definitely have your right hand pressing down these low keys of the oboe. It won't hurt them. For your left hand, take your upper joint and it's okay if you press these keys down here. I'm avoiding this little sticking out guy here. Just go right above him. Right hand, left hand, and use a twisting action. And you can see these two parts coming together as I twist the oboe together. Line those up. Oh, it's beautiful. And then flip the oboe over and check that uh, this other bridge is also lined up. Sometimes you'll notice that you get this one lined up perfectly, and then this one is a little bit off. That might be okay. If your oboe has any trouble playing, you probably want to get it straightened. Now, our reed is ready to come out of the drink. Go ahead and carefully shake some of the excess water off of there. And it's okay to take your reed and grab the cork part and squeeze it hard as you're putting the reed into the oboe. So I like to take my right hand and just be on top of these keys on the upper joint. And using my left hand, I'm gonna just twist that reed and that's about as far as the reed will go in. There's a stopper on the inside of the oboe, so you don't have to worry about pushing the reed in too far. It will stop about right here. And you want to twist that reed so that you have this row of keys here lined up with a flat part of the reed. So your reed is not like that, it's like that. Now your oboe is ready to play and you have not bent this, these keys, or these keys, which are some of the most common problems that I see here in the repair shop. So I'm always straightening these keys because they get bent when you assemble your oboe. So avoid doing that. Have fun playing the oboe. And I'll see you back here in a minute for disassembly and swabbing.